Hello my soccer universe. I'm saving the best for last, the two Bundesligas. I actually will throw in some Russian Premier League as well, because uh, there were quite some interesting matchups there as well. But yeah, um, this will be the biggest opinion piece of the week, maybe the month that I will have, um, of what happened in the German Bundesliga. I was really uh, thinking whether I should wear one of my two Bundesliga jerseys or whether I should get a third one. I'll talk about that in a second. But then um, things turned out so well for Lusk this uh, weekend that, yeah, I'm wearing the Lusk jersey. I decided also on the black one because um, I think it was a pretty dark weekend for the German Bundesliga. Uh, but more on that, yeah. Let's go to a game and let's see where it goes. Um, we will start, as I said, in the Bundesliga, the Friday evening game. No one knew what was going to happen. I said this is a huge matchup for um, the fight against the relegation between Düsseldorf and Hertha. And it was actually quite the game uh, with Düsseldorf having a very quickly Tony lead through Karma and Tommy, and then they even get a third uh, through Karman right in stoppage time. And I remember I switched to that game, not that I was really watching closely on Friday, but I thought, oh, this is done, done, done and dusted. Uh, and you know, ever since I have this Hertha jersey that I, I really like, I thought, nah, again, they're going downhill and they look like going downhill. But Hertha fought back. They were not wearing the blue and white this time. They were wearing this uh, horrible... <laughs> black and red with the uh, with the awful sponsors on there. Within two minutes, 65 and 66, Eric Tommy and own goal, and then Mateusz Kunja, Kunja make it actually 3-2 for Düsseldorf, and then they get a penalty that Piontek can convert, and it ends 3-3. There was even a chance for Hertha to get the win, but um, I have to say, this would have been a little bit too much, but this was a big sign for Hertha getting back in there. So, as I said, this was normal soccer, everything all right. Hoffenheim Bayern happened. Um, first, first of all, the game was noteworthy. Just let's stay on the sports side of things. That within 15 minutes, uh, Bayern Munich had again a 3 0 lead, similar like what they did to Köln. Serge Gnabry, after a not so great cross, what Mario Basler I think said that the cross was not so great, uh, because Gnabry had to do some acrobatics to get it in. But after not even two minutes, it was 1 0. Joshua Kimmich gets one, and then Sirkzy, a uh, Dutch guy who is actually replacing Lev Lewandowski, gets uh, the third goal. I have to say, the first two were kind of a little bit helped by deflections and so on. Coutinho adds on 4 0 at the half. Right after the half, make it 5 0, and Goretzka makes it 6 0. And I think everything that happened after was primed by exactly this result. What had happened? Um, you heard me last weekend that uh, what happened in the Gladbach sector, where there was the uh, target put on uh, Hoffenheim owner um, Hopp. It happened again that the Bayern fans this time um, were furling a banner that more or less says uh, the, the German Football Federation doesn't keep their um, word, that they are uh, crooked and that uh, Didi Hopp remains an SOB. What followed there is that the referee saw that their players were really upset, even the Bayern players, uh, to, especially the Bayern players, went to them. What were they doing? Stop it. Uh, game was interrupted uh, for a good while. They went out again. Uh, so they went through this protocol uh, that is reserved for racism, homophobia and any other you know, hate speech. So I guess this falls under that. More on that later. Um, then a second time, the other ultra group of Bayern is referring Pretty, pretty much calling Hop an SOB, and you can see him in the stands, he's clearly shaken by all that. And the Bayern, especially Karl Rummenigge, is coming up to him, uh, apologizing and you know, giving him support. Um, the players go in the tunnel, uh, 
speak what should be done and they then say that the last 13 minutes um, they just <sighs> yeah <laughs> play the ball amongst each other along the center line and that's how the game finishes um, huge scandal in Germany um, and it has to be said that similar scenes not as prevalent happened in Dortmund where a game got stopped, it happened in Köln where the game was stopped, uh, it happened then even uh, in Berlin where the game got stopped, only Leipzig that did something and I think in Dresden there happened something as well. So all the big ultra scenes had a statement against Hopp calling him an SOB. And I have to be honest, my first reaction when I read it, I didn't see it live, when I read it was, wow, what about the great support, Papa, and I think this was kind of the first reaction of everyone, but I always had a feeling, you know, uh, fan groups, especially in Germany, they don't make a fuss for nothing. And I always had this, the, the, the ace in mind, so I was, was watching on Sunday a talk show, uh, regarding that game and they all yeah we need to ban the ultras and all that 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 kind of stuff that you have to what what is happening it cannot be that we have so much hate in the stadiums the outcome was great everyone kind of underlined what a nice man did he hope is how much he donates to uh, cancer research and you know other things what he has done for for the region and all of this might be true and i don't in any way condone the type of language that has been used However, if you dig deeper, most of the people there didn't read the full first banner that got unfurled. They just saw the last line. Hop is an SOB. Uh, and that's where the whole discussion on that went completely pear-shaped, in my opinion. Uh, I think the fans have a valid point. What had happened? Uh, the DFB... German Soccer Federation, uh, kind of two years ago, they were meeting re regularly with uh, ultra groups and fan groups who, to their credit, and I've watched a lot about ultras lately and the fan scene, uh, also some worrying parts uh, that I want to touch on a little bit. Um, I watched a lot there and um, the German ultra groups, unlike in other places have really more or less stamped out most homophobic chants, most racist chants. Yes, there were incidents. You ironically, uh, no, no, yeah, I say because I, I actually like the team. Uh, Schalke fans have not been outstanding there and there have been some others. But uh, largely these chants that were very, very prevalent in the 90s when I went to a stadium, I, I can even, even remember the game in Munich once. And Munich is a really nice, nice, civilized way to watch soccer. This has to be 100, 100 purpose and say, you heard a chance like this. They have largely dissipated. And um, part of the goodwill, um, you know, the German league prides itself having low prices, that they have the 50 plus one rule, which there's the first target on Hopp because he basically bankrolls Hoffenheim and just uh, through a financial construct, he's not the owner, majority owner, but uh, everyone knows that he says what's, what's going on. However, with the rise of Red Bull, I think the target went away from Hopp towards Red Bull. Um, so within these discussions, the DFB said, yeah, we are not doing those collective stadium bans. If something happens, we cannot uh, ban everyone. Then Hop, of course, denies any wrongdoing, says it was an employee that did it, a groundskeeper. Uh, there were some um, speakers with whistle tones placed underneath the away sector of Dortmund. And he had this private... Um, trouble with the Dortmund fans for a long time. The Dortmund fans have not forgotten about all that. Um, and, you know, Dortmund is probably the most, um, nah, not the most ready, directly, but, you know, they are, they kept up we have, against Hoffenheim. And he put on these whistling noises to drown them out. See what happened with others as well. This incensed them. Uh, he also was, I think, recording Dortmund fans and then uh, sued them privately, which is also not the nicest thing to do. I think um, I think the biggest mistake of Hopp there is that he's not above those things. He gets visibly affected by it. 
and I think he lacks the understanding for going out. Again, the language used, I don't condone at all, but you know, you have to go back to the core of things. So this was one thing that's going on. Now, Dortmund fans were protesting and again calling him an SOB not too long ago. And what does the Football Federation? They banned Dortmund fans from traveling to, uh, to Hoffenheim for two years. Collectively. No Dortmund fans allowed in Hoffenheim. And that's what got the whole thing rolling. That's why when last uh, week in Mönchengladbach it said no collective punishments. That was again what the, all the other ultra groups that were now just repeating the chant. And why do we repeat the chant? I read a great R article. It's like little, little boys. You know it affects him. And of course you're gonna push the button over and over and over again. Uh, again, not condoning it, but you have to understand what's what's behind the whole thing. So uh, the ultra groups are actually siding with Dortmund uh, and saying this cannot be. You just promised us there's no collective punishment and now you come back. In addition, this guy has been doing shit to fans all over the place. He's even suing them pri privately. This is not right. Something has to give here. And I think this is the dialogue that has been missing. And this is the message that has been lost. The message has been lost uh, mainly due to the words that have been used the, uh, in that whole scandal. However, I, I think there's another level in there. Uh, first of all, uh, maybe two, that players actually took it upon themselves to kind of decide on that. I think, yeah, we can discuss about that. But now comes the real point. The protocol that should be applied for racism and homophobia was for the first time enacted in Germany and it reminds me unfortunately uh, the incident in Spain at Rayo where uh, with this Ukrainian supposedly Nazi uh, there was of course hate, hate slogans against him and the protocol was, was, was applied there. It was applied because a millionaire got offended. And calling a, milli a millionaire being discriminated, I have a big problem with that. I have a big, I honestly have a big problem also with uh, the fact that this happened, that uh, there was serious racist, uh, racist abuse at the cup game Schalke uh, Hertha. And I'm ashamed to say I didn't realize it during, during the game. I remember the Schalke, uh, the Hertha the player being so upset that he got them the yellow red. Uh, I understand now why it happened and the protocol should be applied right there and then. The player said, uh, I'm offended, there you have to stop it. Not when a banner is unfurled and I'm sure, there will, I'm, you can be sure the next round in Germany it will be open war between the ultras and the clubs. And I'm not sure what Bayern is gonna do. I'm really not sure what, what Bayern, they said they will have the big uh, meeting and so on uh, with uh, with, with the club, how to uh, deal with the ultras, that there is no tolerance, that uh, they are ashamed and so on. <sighs> I know why Bayern stepped in. SAP, the company that Hop uh, helped found, is bankrolling the, the DFB and is bankrolling Bayern. They are giving them money. Of course you're not gonna bite the hand that feeds. So... <laughs> I was really about to, I have to get a Bayern jersey for my channel. But I was really gonna go out on Saturday at first and get this Bayern jersey and um, maybe even wear a Bayern jersey for this one without even presenting it at first. Uh, my tone has changed. It is, uh, it's uncomfortable, the situation. I think Gabriel McMurmacott said it's uncomfortable. Um, I think both sides did serious mistakes. Um, the one thing, is that through the wording used by the ultras, I think the whole thing got in the completely wrong direction. Um, I think that should have been done better. I know why they've done it, because Dortmund fans have used this SOB word, and that's why they are repeating it, and repeating it, and repeating it. Uh, to kind of hit home the point that uh, this doesn't change a thing, but uh, it's not smart. That's what I have to blame the ultras for, but I also have to blame uh, the clubs and the DFB for not being able to see what's actually behind it. Let's go back to uh, sports. 
again, big opinion piece of, 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 all of mine. Um, that's literally how I felt. We had a big uh, battle if also for relegation between Mainz and Paderborn. I think it was mostly played uh, the bad weather where Mainz ran uh, get the 2 0 win, um, basically giving them a cushion. Dortmund Freiburg, uh, Jane Sancho, a nice assist of Azar, got a really nice goal right at the beginning. They couldn't back it up. Uh, to get a second one, they didn't start with Holland, and then uh, Freiburg actually had chances to get the equalizer. Dortmund barely hanging on to this 1 0 victory. Augsburg Gladbach, first half complete crap, second half that's where things um, got alive and got alive a lot. Uh, ben Sebaini with a really nice, nice shot makes it 1 0 for um, Gladbach. Stindl adds a second one after an assist by Plea, but Löwen can put one back in the 57th and uh, Gladbach having a little bit more and more of the game, but having some trouble converting. Stindl though makes it 3-1, but Finn Bogerson can put one back and then they have the huge chance at the end of the game to get an equalizer. Cannot manage it, so Gladbach gets a kind of important victory for them. Um, then the late game was Köln against Schalke. Um, Köln in great form, Schalke. They were great in the first game and then everything went down. Uh, Sebastian Bonov gets the first goal in the ninth. Uh, Cordoba in the 39th makes it 2-0 and then in uh, the second half when everything petered out. I mean at that point uh, Köln was so dominant that no much was coming from Schalke. But Alexander Nuber with a horrible on goal. I think ever since he went to Bayern, I think the, the pressure is just getting too much because Schalke fans are, of course, pissed. Uh, it was a shot by Kind that he just has to take like this, and then it somehow falls between his legs. A uh, horrible on goal. Uh, but yeah, his confidence at the moment is definitely shot. Um, I did not see much of Union Berlin Wolfsburg. It was 2 2, but Leipzig Leverkusen, I followed. Um, on the side, more, more, more or less, while playing with my uh, daughters, it was a, a actually quite fun. It was a very open, up and down game where Leverkusen at the first at, uh, had uh, much the better of the game, and when they took the lead through Bailey, it was quite deserved. But right three minutes pay, uh, late, as Patrick Schick can equalize, and then Le Leipzig was pressing for the goal but could not get there and it ends 1-1 which means that with uh, the Frankfurt game being postponed and now in the table Bayern is four points clear of Leipzig, uh, Dortmund a point behind Leipzig and Gladbach with a game in hand it's also could uh, draw level with Leipzig so it's still a four-way race but Bayern looks comfortable now, Leverkusen looks comfortable in fifth and yeah maybe Schalke is really dangerously uh, there. I mean, I would say Schalke, Wolfsburg, Hoffmann, Freiburg for the last Europa League spot and you know there's also a cup winner in there. Cup rounds coming soon. Uh, in the relegation, I think uh, everyone down there, I mean, uh, Mainz picked up a win, Düsseldorf uh, got a point, Hertha probably just avoided being really direct in there because that would have been horrible for Hertha, but you know, they're not quite safe uh, yet, but it is a little bit of cushion to Düsseldorf. Bremen, of course, has not played Paderborn, looks a certainty. Let's go far east to Russia. Just the results, but I think there were two games that stand out. The classic Moscow derby between Dynamo and Spartak. Um, I heard that Dynamo played nicely, but Spartak made the goals. 2-0, I think Dynamo hit twice the woodwork. And then the big clash between the Champions League team, Zenit and Lokomotiv, uh, who are not 1-2 and two at the moment. And nil nil. Um, so we can look now in the table. We have Zenit ahead of Krasnodar, uh, leading quite comfortably. Rostov is in the CSK, and then as Lok Lokomotiv, Spartak and Dynamo, ninth and tenth. So you would actually expect them to be a little bit higher, but uh, the realities in Russia have changed a little bit. And I want to finish in Austria, where we had the second to last round. And this time I did not only watch the last game, I actually watched all the games uh, happening at the same time. Focus was Lask, Hartberg and Sturm Austria, because Hartberg had a six point lead over Austria Wien. Uh, if Lask beat Hartberg and Austria wins Sturm, then there's only three points and Austria can still catch them. So this was kind of the premise before every, every, everything else was all not that important. Um, Hartberg actually took a lead at Lask. 
Fortunately, in the build-up, one of our players got an ACL injury and is out for the rest of the season. Not happy about that one. Uh, and Hardback played rough and um, fortunate, fortunately for Lusk for the uh, Red Wrestler game in the 33rd, there was a, um, a yellow-red given. The first yellow for that guy was not all that great. But that actually set primed what happened in the second half. And what happened in the second half that Lask just rolled over the first 15 minutes and there was not much that Hartberg could do about it. Um, it was Klaus in the 51st and Michael a little bit later after an assist by Thomas Sabitzer, brother of um, um, Marcel Sabitzer of um, Leipzig. Klaus quickly thereafter adds a third uh, and so the game was won for Lask and then Tete and Klaus late add two more and Hartberg was kind of looking a little bit desperate at this point however because um, Austria Wien had meanwhile taken the lead kind it wasn't a really nice uh, goal I have, I have to say by Zakaria but it came completely against the run of play in the 70th minute um, and I thought myself, will Austria really hang on to a lucky win? No, Bekim Balai gets a late equalizer and sends a whole Hartberg into uh, delirium. They lose 5-1 and are celebrating like crazy because they have qualified for the championship playoff, which means they will not get relegated. This is the team with the smallest budget in the league and they will not get relegated. So fully deserving of that. And then... To make things for Lask even happier, because five on win is great, and it was clear that it we will stay at least level with points. But Salzburg dropped the game in Altach. Sydney Sam got a one nil for Altach, and Salzburg didn't look good. Sydney Sam shortly after the break makes it two nil. Juan Hijan, you know the one that's from the Holland, uh, uh, Juan uh, Minamino attack. That's the one who's left, and Patson Dacker is kind of trying to fill in. He can pull one back and you think it gets uh, close, but no. Uh, Zwischenbrugger makes it 3-1 and just shortly after 3-2, but Salzburg, it just does not look right. This is a team that has been, yes, um, there have been five changes from the game against uh, Frankfurt. The coach also wanted to save these players for the semifinal against Lusk. But to be honest, any, any, Salzburg team should roll was over Altach. So there's something quite not right and it makes me actually nervous for the semi-final happening on Thursday because I'm afraid that Salzburg will find this gear and then eliminate Lusk uh, for once. But you know, games need to be played. So in the table, if we look now, um, we have Lusk now six points clear. Yes, it will be halved soon. So. Rapid could be dangerous as well. There are six points behind Salz, Salz, Salzburg, as I say, Sturm and Hartberg are in the group. And Austria Wien, big as Austria Wien is only top, will only play in the relegation playoffs where they're favored to win, even it all. The relegation battle, though, is a tight one between Matusburg, Admira, Swarovski, and St. Pölten. I think those four, this will be a fight until the end. Anyway, drop any comments that you have for what I said in this video. I said a lot. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Uh, this subscribe my channel and see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.